All right, here we're gonna have a representation of urinary tract infections. It's not gonna be a whole story. It's just gonna help us remember the main things that we wanna keep in mind. So take a look at this woman over here. Well, it's a woman because urinary tract infections are 10 times more common in women than in men. And the reason for this will help us remember the pathophysiology. Let's take a look at her bladder. We see these monsters over here that are ascending the bladder. Well, actually they're starting from the urethra over here and going to the bladder, and then they're going up the ureter, the yellow ureter over here. Urinary tract infections are, are primarily caused by an ascension of microbes from the urethra and to the bladder. And that's why intercourse predisposes a person to urinary tract infections, because you're introducing all this bacteria to that area. And it also helps us understand why it's more common in women. And this is because women's shorter urethras are colonized by fecal flora. So the fecal flora work their way up into the bladder, and into the ureter. Another thing we want to keep in mind is that ascension of the microbes to the kidney results in pyelonephritis, represented by the pie that she got on her face. Pi for pyelonephritis. And this presents with fever, represented by the fire, chills, flank pain, costovertebral angle tenderness, hematuria, and white blood cell casts. Risk factors for urinary tract infection include obstruction, such as due to kidney stones and enlarged prostate in a man, kidney surgery, catheterization, again because this introduces bacteria to the area, congenital GU malformations, diabetes, and pregnancy. Alright, this is actually the sister of the first person we met and she wears tights. Sister with tights for cystitis. Cystitis is an infection of the bladder caused by a urinary tract infection. So here we have the bladder on fire to help us remember that cystitis is an infection of the bladder. It presents as dysuria, urinary frequency, represented by the urinary frequency, urgency, and suprapubic pain. But systemic signs are usually absent, and that's important for diagnosis. You're not gonna see things such as fever and night sweats. Diagnosis of cystitis, as well as urinary tract infections, is made with white blood cells in the urine. And that's, of course, due to the infection. Other diagnostic markers include positive leukocyte esterase, since this is evidence of white blood cell activity, positive nitrite test, and this is due to the reduction of urinary nitrates by gram-negative bacterial species, such as E. coli, and the positive urease test, since this tells us that there are urease-producing bugs, such as Saprophyticus, Proteus, and Klebsiella. Let's end off this scene with a discussion about which species of bacteria cause urinary tract infections. And for that, we need to know her name. Her name is Sarah Pep. So let's ask Sarah Pep herself. Okay, we're not gonna ask her, but ask Sarah Pep is gonna help us remember. E for Estrichia coli, I know it's supposed to start with an A, but for here, we'll start with an E. S for Staphylococcus saprophyticus, K for Klebsiella, Sarah for Serratia, P for Proteus morabilis, E for Enterococcus, and P for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on urinary tract infections. Stay tuned for our next video and take care.